Hello and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the second Mobile World Congress Americas. You just heard the global perspective from Matt. Now, let's talk about what's happening here in the United States. But first, let me tell you a quick story that illustrates how much wireless is part of our lives today. About a month ago, I was going home to Houston to visit my dad. And I'm at the airport buying a bottle of water and a newspaper. I reach into my purse and I realize, I don't have my wallet. I left it on the kitchen table. So I'm looking at 48 hours with no cash and no credit cards. <laughs> so I was a little stressed. But then I thought about it. I do have my phone. Uber can get me where I need to go. Morning coffee, Starbucks app. Lunch and maybe some groceries. Whole Foods. By Saturday, I was jamming to Spotify and feeling pretty good. My daughter Hallie and I, we went to go get a manicure, and the salon took Samsung Pay. Awesome. Because I had my phone, I had everything I needed. But here's what still surprises me. How quickly we take innovations like mobile pay for granted. All of us do. We forget that the network and the devices and the apps that run on this amazing platform get better all the time. Now, mobile pay is something we all know about. Let's talk about something you may not. I recently met Paul Schroeder. Paul has very low vision. He showed me his Iris smart glasses. They use 4G to provide an OnStar-like service for the blind. While wearing his glasses, Paul was talking to Stephanie, his operator, who helps him navigate his environment. That is when I'm most proud of our industry, when wireless helps those who need it most. And with 5G, Paul will benefit even more from things like augmented reality and artificial intelligence. Companies like Ira remind us that we are just scratching the surface of what wireless can be. These innovators get so excited when they get talking about what 5G will enable, how real-time connections will unlock new capabilities. From Fortune 100 companies to the smallest startups, everyone is ready to innovate with 5G. Everywhere I go, I'm asked, when will 5G be ready? You probably get that question, too. I say, in a way, 5G is like a Fortnite update to a teenage boy, because everyone wants it now. Companies are lining up to be ready when we are. Here's an example, Zooks. Zooks is a company that will be ready to launch a fleet of cars without steering wheels in 2020. That's no steering wheels in 18 months. Their ability to make that happen is tied to our ability to reach more Americans with 5G. A year ago, we talked in generalities about how 5G would solve problems, make cities smarter, and deliver healthcare on the go. Today, we are talking about real companies and real venture capital. 5G is happening now. And the global race to 5G is on. At the dawn of 4G, no one imagined a company like Ira would use mobile broadband to help the blind, or that wireless would create the app industry the sharing economy, and crowdsourcing. These are now leading American companies supporting American jobs, making American lives better. Leading in 4G was critical to growing our economy and creating jobs. Make no mistake about it. Other countries see what 4G leadership has meant for America, and they want it for 5G. We want that innovation to happen here. A study released earlier this year showed us in a tight race behind China and South Korea. The key difference? 
their governments are moving aggressively to free up huge blocks of spectrum and accelerate deployment. Just this summer, South Korea auctioned both mid-band and high-band spectrum. So what are we doing? A year ago, when we were together in San Francisco, there were no 5G deployments planned. But our industry has responded decisively. The first 5G deployments are happening now in communities across the country. By this time next year, we will have more than 50 5G cities. <laughs> Thank goodness we Americans hate to lose. Our wireless industry is making 5G happen at an extraordinary pace, investing billions. In fact, we rank first in the world in industry investment, all driven by competition. Competition globally and competition with each other. So it's fitting that we are here in LA where three carriers will launch 5G very soon. Just like LeBron, we all love LA. But we can't win this race alone. Policymakers are critical to our success, critical to how quickly we reach more communities, and critical to make sure we have the ability and the resources we need to scale 5G. Just as carriers and equipment companies are answering the challenge, our key policymakers are too. Congress, the FCC, and the administration know we can't afford to lose this race. And it starts with Spectrum. It always does. To unlock the full potential of 5G, we need hundreds of megahertz of new spectrum. Let's start with high band. A year ago, the FCC had zero bands ready for auction. We now have five bands scheduled to be auctioned by the end of next year. Our real challenge is mid-band, which offers both coverage and capacity. Turns out, we rank sixth globally. Now, if the United States ranks six in soccer, not too shabby. Six in wireless, not so great. But here again, what a difference nine months makes. We've seen real progress on mid-band. At 3.4, the administration is studying commercial access. At 3.5, the FCC is poised to finalize its rules. And the FCC identified the C-band for future mobile use. Now, the trick is translating those efforts into real auction schedule with real clearing targets and fast. When we are back here in LA next year, I want to celebrate a mid-band auction schedule. With Chairman Pai and congressional leadership, I'm confident that we will. Now, I want to leave you with the most impactful thing that policymakers can do for 5G and winning the race. Citing reform. Citing is like the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Your wife may have dragged you there, but it was so, so worth it. We are competing with nations that approve new wireless sites in weeks or even days. The good news? You guys can install these ever-shrinking small cells in an hour or two. If only the government could move as fast as you do. Approvals still take years with huge fees that slow deployment. Think about it this way. It took us 30 years to deploy 150,000 towers. Tomorrow's 5G networks require five times that amount in the next few years. Winning the race to 5G is a national priority, and we need national help on siting to do it. This spring, we got a great down payment with FCC action to modernize federal rules. Now, this month, we need the FCC to give clear direction to localities on procedures and fees for tomorrow's 5G networks. Let's look at some numbers. Accenture said, 
that 5G will add $500 billion to our economy. And if we can speed up that deployment by just one year, we can add 100 billion more. And I know we will, because this year we showed that we are committed to winning the 5G race. Now, my challenge to you is we need more. We need more communities served, we need more action from policymakers, and we need more innovation kept here at home. Winning matters. Let's win.